this week's show, uh, Bill Goes Backpacking, Harold Forms the Possum Lodge Cadets, and I'm going to turn a barbecue into scuba gear. And now, here's my personal hero, a man who jests out windmills, a real Don Coyote of the Mantle of Munchies, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Red Green. Thank you all for tuning us in. Uh, I would like to say that uh, that intro you just heard had absolutely nothing to do with me. Unfortunately, the guy who said it does. <laughs> My nephew, Harold. <laughs> I didn't ask you to come over here, Harold. It's okay. I guess you can see why I'd like to keep a shovel handy. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, boy, things have really been humming up at the lodge this week, and it's not just from the way we rewired the water here. Uh, the local uh, radio station has made an announcement that somewhere in the area surrounding uh, Possum Lake, there's the largest deposit of gold ever recorded. Oh, yeah? Well, where, where'd you hear that? Well, I just said, Daryl, on the radio. Well, I, I don't think you could believe everything you hear from that station. The entire staff's an alcoholic. <laughs> No, hell, this is not just Bernie hallucinating, okay? This is a scientific study done by the government, and I don't think the whole government would all be hallucinating at the same time again. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, a bunch of us have decided to dig ourselves uh, a gold mine. And uh, I even asked uh, old man Sedgwick to pitch in because I figure, you know, he's, he was probably in the original gold rush. You know, he, he's probably gonna know where to dig. <laughs> that, that was 1849. A shovel? No, it's five bucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to get out there and get out as soon as we can, but it's, uh, it's not going to get in the way of the show. I'll keep you posted on the gold mine thing, and, and, and I'll tell you what. Even if we strike gold, we're still going to finish the show. It'll just have a lot more of Harold in the second half. <laughs> Can you be? You'll never know till you try. Never know till you try. How far can you go? You'll never know till you try. Never know till you try. Are you slow or are you quick? You'll never know until you poke a mountain lion with a stick. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to show you something you can do with an old broken down barbecue. Now, I've been, I've been saving this beauty, hoping that it would eventually have value as an antique, but uh, apparently the market for rusty metal appliances covered with bits of burnt meat has gone a little soft on us. <laughs> now, I suppose a bunch of you are saying, uh, hey, Red, why don't you just throw the darn thing in the lake? <laughs> or who cares? Or what else is on? That'll be your wife talking, probably. <laughs> well, the truth is, if you do throw one of these in the lake, Within a couple of days, you get all the uh, grease and fat coming up on shore there, and then uh, the propane tank will cut loose and shoot right up through the bottom of that old lap street canoe that's been up here at the lodge since before I started coming. Well, I should say, that's what could happen. <laughs> but the funny thing is, we are actually going to throw this barbecue into the lake, but with ourselves attached to it, because we're going to turn this propane barbecue into a full set of scuba gear. <laughs> all right, step one. Disassemble the unit into its individual components. Yeah. <laughs> Oxidation is a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> All right, step two, disconnect the propane tank. Now, the, uh, the connector on these units is left-hand thread, so uh, to loosen them, you gotta turn them to the right. You can loosen them by turning them to the left, if you're the size of Moose Thompson. But it won't ever go back together again. <laughs> now, once you got the hose out of there, you might just want to abandon the project, try something else. Maybe turn the propane tank into, say, a party-sized cigarette lighter. <laughs> or a propane-powered lawn roller. <laughs> or I know, I know it'd be kind of fun. You just throw the whole tank into a smoldering campfire for an exciting game of Let's Surprise the Boy Scouts. <laughs> but for our purposes, we're going to drain the gas out of there so we can use it for our scuba gear. 
Oh, well, I'll just, I'll just move this aside so we get all the gas out of her. You don't want to be 20,000 major leagues under the sea and suck in a lung full of propane. Instant headache there, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, you want to save these uh, grills. You can make yourself a dandy little shark cage. Not big enough for your whole body, but certainly big enough to protect whatever it is you care about. <laughs> The burger, you don't really need. Chuck that. <laughs> but you want to save the, the hose, and you want to save the heat controls, because uh, these become your air regulators. One for you, one for your buddy. <laughs> and you got that fat jar that hangs down underneath the barbecue. Hang on to that. That's going to become your diving mask. <laughs> Boy, you can get a lot of fat out of four strips of bacon, can't you? You squeeze them, right? <laughs> anyway, I think uh, that's pretty well everything we need. And sure as heck don't need the spark igniter. Not gonna be able to start a fire underwater. <laughs> well, I guess that tank will be empty now. <laughs> wow, well, we got lucky there. The propane tank landed in town which is where I had to go anyway to get her filled up with air at the gas station. <laughs> now, breathing this air might make you a little sleepy, because it's tire air. <laughs> Always time for humor at the lodge. Now, you're going to need something to put on your feet to help you move along in the water. How about this? They're flippers, aren't they? <laughs> it's tire air. <laughs> OK, so what you got to do is you got to put the, the tank on your back, the flippers on your feet, and the jar on your fat face, or the fat jar on your face. <laughs> and they're gonna do all these jobs using the handyman secret weapon, <laughs> duct tape. <laughs> now, this is probably gonna take me a while, so why don't we get on with the show, and we can come back when I got her all built. <laughs> That was my favorite part of the show, the part where we expose those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> and now here to prove that once again is my Uncle Red and his best friend in the whole wide world. Oh, okay, Mr. Glenn Braxton. <laughs> All right, it says here, we got Dear Experts. I am organizing a cookout for all the gang at work, and I am wondering what type of food to prepare and serve. Would you have any hints you would like to pass on? Well, uh, I always find budget is the main consideration. Uh, you know, let's say we'd have something like a fish fry up at the lodge, and then, of course, nobody catches any. <laughs> and uh, so we have to augment the menu, and always forces us over budget. And then you get all the whiners who want to know, uh, how do hot dogs and macaroni qualify as fish fry? <laughs> so I, I just tell the guys, hey, throw some worms in. You know? <laughs> well, you sounded serious at the time. Oh, <laughs> well, the most important thing is to find the right man for the job. For your chef, you need to get a welder. <laughs> welder? Oh, yeah, an acetylene torch will cook a 12-pound roast in under four minutes. <laughs> And if you got electricity, you can arc weld a whole pig in less than a minute. <laughs> my brother, my brother found that out. He was he was up in the voltage around the pig pen at the farm. <laughs> and electricity adds to the presentation of the meal. Yeah, sure, because the little pig's uh, tail straightens right out, and all the hair, all the hair all over him stands straight up. <laughs> but you got to make sure all your guests are grounded, because if they stick a fork into it. <laughs> It is winter. Time to get your sled out and swoosh down giant hills to learn to hang on tight and have those high-speed thrills. The good old sled will show you how to fly and soar and whiz and teach you just how hard a frozen elm tree really is. <laughs> Your very own scuba. <laughs> Bottom of the lake, here I come. Boy, this fat jar smells like every grade of meat I've ever eaten, and then some. <laughs> oh, remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Oh. 
Is this just heavy or am I getting the bends? <laughs> See you standing there. I was just uh, doing a air direction test for the department. <laughs> I'll write that down on my scorecard. Uh, I mean my notebook. Well, you government guys are pretty sophisticated. Oh yeah. See, I would have thought this was just an ordinary golf ball here. No, that's a dimpled ergonometer. <laughs> wow. And this is not just a putter. No, that sets the parameters for the wind speed indicator. It's a recalibration wrench. No kidding. And you don't just call that a putt? Oh, I'd call that a birdie. <laughs> Bob works for the Department of Natural Resources, so you always know where to find him during working hours. Uh, I, mean, I thought I'd go and ask him about the goal thing, because yeah, with him be being with the government and everything, I figured he'd know all about it. Of course, all he wanted was for me to play golf with him. Well, uh, no thanks, Bob. I, I just wanted to come by and ask you about this gold thing. What gold thing? You know, like a golf trophy? No, 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 no. Didn't you hear about this on the radio? It's, uh, they say that, that there's the largest deposit of gold ever right around possible. I can't believe you, you guys in natural resources don't know something about natural resources. I mean, what else is there to the job, Bob? Red, I think your information is a little off. The report stated that Possum Lake has the largest, largest uh, deposit of mold ever recorded. Mold? Mm -hmm. What the heck are we going to do with mold? Oh, no. I guess you, you could turn Possum Lodge into a, a yogurt ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Red, why don't you uh, join me for a game of golf? It'll take your mind off your disappointment. I thought you were just testing the wind here, Bob. Well, whatever. <laughs> Must be real windy over there where you are. <laughs> well, uh, this gold mold thing has been a bit of a setback. We've never heard anyone uh, getting rich during a mold rush. <laughs> well, you know, Uncle Red, uh, mold has its value, too, you know, because they use it, like, you know, uh, to make bread or penicillin. <laughs> you know, mold is not a bad thing. Would you pay 400 bucks an ounce for it, Harold? <laughs> if not, then it's a bad thing, because that's how much we spent digging the gold mine, all right? Four, $400? <laughs> How'd you manage to spend $400 on, like, 12 volunteers digging a hole in the ground? Uh, mainly refreshments. <laughs> well, uh, you, can, you can build up a thirst inhaling that mold, I'll tell you. <laughs> what we found is that uh, brewer's yeast is the best for handling mold of that type. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we've decided to convert the mine into an underground parking lot, and we figure we can get 15 cars single file in there, and the only trick is you have to park in the reverse order that you'd be leaving. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Uncle Red, have, have, you, have you thought this plan through? Because, you know, I don't want to make judgments here, you know, but I'm just thinking that um, I think your plan's flawed. It's badly flawed, like Rescue 911 flawed, you know. <laughs> Well, now, Harold, if we're going to get into comparing things with flaws in them, I think you're not going to have a very nice day. <laughs> well, I'm just mean, you know, like, like, say, just even one car gets stuck in the mine, then, you know, everybody gets shafted. <laughs> uh, we got that covered, Harold. You see, we, you back the first car in, you know, drive the next one, back the next one, drive the next one. So they're all bumper to bumper. We give everybody jumper cables. Plus. We're going to charge them all three bucks a head. Oh, that's great. So you get, like, your 400 back in no time. Well, it's 800 now. And we had to buy the jumper cables. And, of course, we all wanted, you know, the snazzy vests. And then everybody wanted a flashlight. We bought 100 flashlights. Well, that, that's OK, too, because, you know, you finally learned that in order to make it big, you got to spend big. <laughs> I'm real glad to hear you say that, Harold, because we, we took it right out of your salary. <laughs> The fish swam in like horses and jumped up on the beach. 
They climbed the split leaf maple and each one gave a speech. They sang a bunch of show tunes and jumped back into the lake. It's amazing what you see up here after you bang your head really, really hard on the dock. <laughs> Attention, everybody. Clear the area. <laughs> it's time for Adventures with Bill. Bill had asked me to drop over, so I did. And uh, he wanted to do some backpacking today, so he's got these. These are, these are I don't know why we never had these in the Army. Of course, I wasn't in the Army, but I'm sure we didn't, wouldn't have had Oh, his has got a little bit of a bend in her there, so. Bill, very resourceful. Just bend it over his knee and just, just oh, oh. Well, might have been a bit of a, it's not good enough for Bill now. And, However, apparently it's good enough for me. Now, Bill, there's a couple of straps to your arm. Well, that's it. You got your arm and the other one and the other. No, Bill. Bill, Bill, you're going to get dizzy there. Let me let me help you. This is It's good to go backpacking with someone else, and they can help you get the arm hole through there, and then you get it centered on there, and then... No, 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 no Bill, 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 Bill. Ah. Well, we worked that out. So now and there's... I guess that was the daily, the daily log that you keep in the woods. Anyway, Bill wanted me to load them up there. This is the beauty. These things are so light, and they're, they're perfectly balanced, and it's amazing how much stuff, you know, if you've got the little attachments and so on, how much stuff you can get uh, you can get onto your backpack, and then you're just free to go through the woods at your leisure. Because you miss so much when you're, say, going over the woods in a Concord or something of that nature. This way you can see all the trees and see the ground and... Well, almost all the branches. There we go. There, a little bit of limbo there gives you an appreciation for the Caribbean and all that they stand for. There we go. And the beauty is, if you do get tired, you're just you can sit down and relax. You are, in fact, one with nature. Oh, oh, oh. Oh well. Oh well. And you've got you have basically all your belongings. You're, you're self-sufficient at this point with, uh, with this type of a rig. And then you can just, you know, when you get comfortable, you take, you take the thing off and, oh, 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 boy. But you know, resourcefulness is the mark of a, of a good backpacker. And Bill is resourceful. <laughs> this next part of the show is for all you young people out there. You deserve this. <laughs> Hi, and welcome, uh, Adventure Seekers, to the first edition ever of... <laughs> Possum Lodge Cadets. <laughs> okay, well, Possum Lodge Cadets are for those of us who aren't, you know, official members of the real, actual Possum Lodge. But that's only because we don't believe in their rules, their attitudes, and, well, okay, they won't let us join. Okay, but I'll bet you that being a Possum Lodge Cadet is even way more better. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you this. Okay, so you want to make a uniform, right? No problemo. <laughs> cool. <huh? laughs> okay, okay. All right. So all you need for a uniform is like um, clothes, you know, and some scissors, uh, an official Possum Lodge hat, you know, and a few incidentals, and then of course you're going to want to have a meeting. So you have to have at least one other person to join the Possum Lodge cadets, in which at this point I'm finding to be, you know, the hardest part. But what I do, we're just going to sit I need another bungee cord. I'm putting some lumber on the roof rack there. No, uh, Uncle Red, no, no. This is like an official uh, cadet tie now. Well, fine. You can leave it on if you like. Cadets enjoy action-filled danger, moment-to-moment -moment excitement. <laughs> I know uh, you teenagers watch a whole lot of television, and you get kind of a mixed-up idea of what the world's really like. Uh, the worst thing is, uh, TV makes crime look good. Or actually, crime is bad. First of all, there's no such thing as a criminal mastermind, okay? The prison population is not a brain trust. <laughs> if you ever skim through the mug shots down at the police station there, you know you're not looking at the MIT graduating class. <laughs> and if you're a criminal, one of these guys is going to be your roommate for the next 20 years. Also, if you get into the criminal line of work, you got to work a lot of nights. There's zero benefits, and nobody's going to come to your patio party because they're afraid there's going to be a drive-by shooting. <laughs> Despite what you see on television, most criminals either get caught or killed or they have to change their identity and move to a country where there's nothing worth stealing. <laughs> so I'm asking you to just say no to assault, break and enter, arson, murder, theft, drug trafficking, and, oh yeah, real estate sales. <laughs> 
So you, Joshua Two Feathers is a real estate developer on the reserve next door to the lodge, and I thought he might have some advice about the underground parking lot. This was handed down to me by my father. Wow, it's like an Indian legend or something. This is a geological survey of the water table drainage patterns. <laughs> now, you see here? How the water comes close to ground level? Yeah. You couldn't dig a basement for a townhouse without hidden water. Forget the underground parking lot, Red, unless you can convert it to a car wash. Oh, are you sure the chart is accurate, Joshua? I mean, I'd hate to change all our plans just because of some old piece of paper and what it has to say. Careful what you say, Red. I won't let you dishonor my father. He had a PhD in urban planning. <laughs> Just like I told them, the darn parking lot all flooded there. 14 cars up to their door handles in well water. <laughs> I'll tell you, by the time those seats get saturated, there'll be more mold around here than in a bachelor's fridge. <laughs> Excuse me, Uncle Red, what about the possum van? You weren't crazy enough like to park the possum van in there, were you? No, please? no, no, Harold, tried to. But uh, just a little tad high there, and she kind of wedged into the entrance, you know? Uh, so that was a lifesaver, but uh, unfortunately, this, of course, prevented the others from getting in and getting their cars, and I never would have guessed the short tempers on some of these, some of these lodge members, you know. <laughs> but it'll, it'll work out okay. And then we got the idea that, uh, you know, if we could raise the, the water pressure, maybe we could just pop the van out of there. <laughs> so I started thinking about the water table and so on, we figured we'd get Moose Thompson to cannonball down the well. <laughs> and uh, I think it would have worked, Harold, but... Uh, well, we forgot to take the bucket out first, and I think we should have greased the sides because he seized up about 30 feet down. You know? <laughs> we'll get him out. We'll just uh, pour some bacon fat down the walls over there and winch him up on the rope, but he's going to have to take those splinters out on his own. Okay, well, just, maybe, you know, you've got that, you know, parking problem story. You might want to just, you know, stick to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we'll be, I mean, worst comes to worst, we'll just wait for the winter and because it'll be, the van will be cold, she'll shrink a bit, and the entrance will freeze up, and, and I think she'll just pop right out of there. Okay, but um, we'll consider this. Maybe the other cars will, like, freeze where they are. They'll get stuck in there. Well, if that happens, we'll give them their three bucks back. <laughs> oh, that's the squeal of the possum. That's meeting time, Uncle Ray. You better get going. Yeah, okay. You go ahead, Harold. I'll be, I'll, I'll be right down. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming uh, straight home after the meeting, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't strike gold uh, this week, but... I didn't strike Harold either, so you got to be proud of me. <laughs> and uh, to all of the rest of you, on behalf of myself and uh, Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, uh, thanks for watching, and keep your stick on the ice. Thank <laughs> you.